Now the reason why I made a video for this is because though it's pretty straightforward, there are a few things that are easy to overlook. So in this first section, you don't need to touch anything. Everything is good the way that it is. You can of course mess around to see what the other options give you, but you don't need to change anything. Now for Android, in the main settings, you're going to want to make sure that you type in your app's name. So I'm just going to put in J26. Then the theme color is going to affect the background color for when you are switching tabs inside Android. So this is what a tab would look like. And so you're going to be able to adjust the color for these tabs. So with this, I'm going to do, let's do blue. Now come over here to options. In this section, you're going to get some pretty cool controls over the app. So if you choose browser, it will just make it so that the website operates in the way that it normally would. If you choose standalone, you're going to be able to specify a starting URL, and you're also going to be able to make it so that the app is forced to open up in portrait or landscape mode, or you can also leave it to just do what it normally would do. So in standalone, I'm going to just put my website, and I'm going to force it to open up in portrait mode. Then go to dedicated picture, and then you're probably just going to want to leave that how it is than other platforms. This section is for Safari 9. You can change your picture into a monochrome icon and it, you can use this toggle to see what different thresholds look like. Then you can choose to have no icon and it will just take the first letter of your domain name. Then the theme color. The theme color is just going to be the color of the icon when the tab is selected. So I'm going to change this to blue. Or it already is blue but the version of blue that I want. Now, as you can see, when it uses the image that I uploaded, it makes the icon pretty small. So you would probably want to upload an icon into this section under dedicated picture and make sure the main part of the logo reaches the edges. So I actually have a version of my logo that does that. Let's see how this looks. So when you upload it, it doesn't automatically select it. So then you're going to have to go over and select it. Now it looks much better. Now come up here to Windows 8 and 10. Now in this section, you're probably going to want to upload a version of your logo that is all white and has a transparent background. So I'm going to go over Dedicate a Picture, then Pick Your Picture for Windows. And I'm going to go to the version of my logo that does that. Then select that dedicated picture. And see, that way it follows more of a traditional Windows theme. Then back over here in Settings, we're going to change the background color. And it recommends to follow the Windows Metro UI. And since it has a version of blue that is pretty close to the version of blue that I use, I'm going to go ahead and select that one. But you can, of course, enter whatever color you would like. Now, the final section, the Fav Icon Generator Options. So first, this part is very important. It is the most important part of this. So you want to select, under Path, you want to select the second option. And then in this section, you want to put assets. So forward slash assets, forward slash. That's it. That's very important because that is the only location that the icons can be uploaded into with the widget. Then come over here to where it says app name. And then select that you want a specific app name. Then type in whatever title that you would want for your app name. Now we are all done and click generate your fav icon and HTML code. So when this is all done, you're just going to want to click fav icon package and it will download your icons.